Hello, everyone. I hope that y'all are doing so, so well on this lovely Thursday. Welcome back for another Adobe Live. Whether you are joining us on YouTube or Behance, welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and drop in the chat and let us know where you are joining from. I am here from Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Idara Ekpo, and I will be the host for today's live. And today we have Anna McNaught, and she's going to be going over a few of the new features in Adobe Photoshop. So Anna, how are you? And where are you joining us from? I am doing great. Thank you so much. Um, I am joining from New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey. I've never been to yes. New Jersey. It gets a really bad rep. Everybody thinks that New Jersey <laughs> means right next to New York City. And I'm actually in Western Jersey by the Pennsylvania Ooh. border. And uh, I don't know if you can see behind me, but I'm surrounded by trees and the river is like 10 <laughs> minutes from here. And we are just in full on nature mode here. And I love it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm a nature girl myself. So I I would love to see that view for sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, it's wonderful. So Everybody who hasn't been to New Jersey, check it out and yes. uh, see what it's really like. Yes, yes, yes. So y'all let us know where you are joining from. I'm seeing England is in the chat. Who else is up in here? I see South of France. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Keep dropping where you are in the chat. We would love to see where you're joining us from. And before we go ahead and get started and diving into all the new features, I just want to again, thank you again for joining us. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our new Adobe live channel on YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with all the latest streams, participate in the Adobe Live community, and so much more. And then make sure that you start your day with the Photoshop Creative Challenges hosted by Sam Peterson every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. You want to tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. Awesome. So Anna, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. And what do we have in store for today? So we have some very exciting things. Um, it We all know that Photoshop 2023 was just released. Um, so there's a lot of fun new features that we're going to be going over. And um, we're going to be taking a look at Photoshop on the web, as well as uh, a little thing that I did here that I want to show you ah. all. Um, yeah. OK, cool. We're on my screen now. So. Um, for any of you that were watching um, Adobe Max either in person or on the keynote um, or virtually on the keynote, this piece was demoed um, for new features in Photoshop. So this was a very exciting moment for me being able to have my art shown on the big screen in front of everyone. Um, and uh, I was actually thinking about making this today, but once I was taking a look at it the other day, I was like, it's really not there's not that much to it, to be honest. Um, so maybe we could just save this for the end because I have some other things in store that I think will be a lot more exciting. And um, we'll kind of bring these features that are new and older features in Photoshop to life. And then if we have some time, we can look at this. But um, the reason I pulled this up is because most of my images have this very surreal fantasy vibe that many of you may know me for. Um, but they all start as a drawing, as simple mm. as this little image right here, just kind of trying to get these ideas out. Um, and one of the key things that I've found with getting these images out is getting them on paper as quick as possible, whether that's getting them into a drawing like this or getting them into Photoshop. And one of the things I want to really focus on today is Photoshop for the web, which we will get into in a few minutes. Um, and the reason Photoshop for the web is so powerful is that anybody can use it, whether you're an Adobe member, Adobe subscriber or not, you can still use Photoshop on the web um, and you can use it anywhere in the world. So for me mm. as a world traveler, it's key to have this ability to get my ideas out as quick as I can, whether I'm on a library computer or someone else's laptop or my iPad, um, or maybe I'm on my computer but I don't happen to have Photoshop for the desktop installed. So this is like one of the greatest new features that Adobe has released. Oh, so excited. I am so, so excited. And then if y'all have any questions while Anna does this incredible work, make sure you drop them in the chat. Again, whether you are YouTube or Behance, drop your questions and we will be sure to get to them. 
Yes. Um, so we will hop over to Photoshop on the web in a few minutes here, but there's just a couple of brief things that I thought we could start with. Um, something that kind of blew my mind with some new Photoshop features. And this is um, the new and improved object selection tool, which maybe many of us are familiar with, um, but there have been some updates to it. And so now we can just really easily hover over all of these areas of our image. And I am obsessed with this. So let's say uh. I have this sweet camel image that I took in Abu Dhabi. Highly recommend everyone going if you haven't mm -hmm. been. Um, but I have my lovely husband hop happen to pop in down here and I need him out of the picture. So I could, of course, um, do some content aware fill. I could uh, clone him out, but now I can just click on him, select him and go, got to make sure he's selected there and go shift delete. And now oh, boom, wow. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> Hopefully not for my life, but no. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can just move around the image and do the same. So if I wanted to take this camel guy out, I could just click him and then shift delete. And it's just going to oh, wow. take him right out of the picture. So then we could clean up these shadows here um, and, and fix things up if we needed to. But you can also kind of do the same for other objects in your picture. So if I wanted to get rid of this bush or these footsteps, I could um, deselect the camels here and then go in and mm -hmm. uh, shift delete. So just something that I was very mind blown by, the shift delete factor is incredible. Oh no, that is absolutely beautiful. And it's just so clean and took yeah. all of two seconds to get rid of uh, of those, those extra people in our shot. I know, does an incredible job. And I have another image that I'm gonna show that on real quick. So let me just close this to keep some room free. Um, so we can do the same thing on like a desk image or maybe you have a landscape shot like we just mm -hmm. had where you need to get rid of something or you have your designer and you have all these uh, images stacked up together. Whatever it may be, object select is right up here under where you would normally have your magic wand tool um, and you can just hover over what you want to get rid of. So mm -hmm. let's say this has some very like vintage vibes. The iPhone does not fit into it anymore. So I'm just going to click it, shift delete and boom. Wow. <laughs> I'm wow. like so mind that is blown so, by that. No, that's literally, somebody said magic indeed. Yeah, that's absolutely magic because. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really is. Like you can just, I didn't even have to do any layer masking here. Yeah. I didn't have to think about anything. Yeah. I just decided I don't want that iPhone in there anymore. Oh, love that. And Carol made a comment said under the under penalty of law, never tell your clients about this feature. <laughs> <laughs> I Seriously. feel that Carol, oh, you could just take that out. <laughs> yep, exactly. So we could do the same with the pen here, shift delete. And wow, it's like, it really is magic. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love, yeah. love magic indeed. Yes. So, so good. So I'm going to close that. And um, then one more thing that uh, before we get into the main bulk of our image today and uh, really designing and doing some Photoshop work, I just want to show another feature that I was thoroughly impressed by. Um, so I got some lions tigers and bears oh my <laughs> <laughs> and I want to put them into the scene but I want to do it as quickly as possible and make them match mm -hmm. so let's just start with one we have our lion um and we're going to go over here to properties and we're just going to click remove background so we could also okay. click um select subject on this mm -hmm. but in this case uh again trying to do the least amount of work here i don't want to spend any time thinking about layer masking so i'm just going to click remove background look wow, at that oh that is so clean <laughs> Like not bad at all. And you bad, could go in bad. and refine this if you really wanted to work on it, but we're just gonna um, move our lion down. And then we're gonna go up to, let's make sure we get that selected and are on the right layer. And then we're gonna go to our neural filters. Okay, so 
Um, for those of you not familiar with neural mm -hmm. filters, absolute game changer. There are so many great things in here. Um, so many different things you can play with from skin smoothing that we learned about a little bit yesterday in Lightroom, mm -hmm. um, all the way through landscape mixer, which is really cool because you can make different, um, scenes and seasons, mm. um, and photo restoration, like just very, very cool stuff. But I just want to take a quick look at harmonization. So we're just going to turn that on and we're going to select our reference layer. So that's going to okay. be the background here. And look at that one click and our lion is now blending into the scene. Oh, wow. So we could shift the colors a little, maybe lessen the strength. So he still has um, a little bit of lionness to him. And um, wow. you can just kind of play around with this. So you get the look that you like. No, that is a powerful tool. Isn't that amazing? Like, so from that to, to now that. being, yep. And now being blended within your scene. Yeah, absolutely incredible. So um, that's just really good. Uh, I feel like especially for people who are just starting out with Photoshop yeah. and looking for some easy ways to do things before you get into maybe some of the bulk of the tools and color grading, such as curves or levels, color balance. Um, but you still want to be able to use these incredible features that Adobe has provided for us. Um, then these are some great very easy ways to do it through object select, removing and uh, getting rid of things and then remove background. And finally, harmonization, you could start compositing in mm -hmm. a few easy steps. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to close out of that. And um, let's get into what we are going to be making today. Yay. <laughs> Yeah. So oh, this is the image that we are going to be building. And if you um, saw uh, my stream a few weeks ago, I'm trying to remember when it was, I did um, a similar photo where I did an under over shot like this uh, from Bora Bora. Uh, and today it's going to be a little bit similar, but focusing more on that cross platform workflow, as well as some of the new features in Photoshop. And then this was exactly what I taught at Adobe Max. So if anybody um, wasn't able to make it there in person, then you'll be able to learn the same things that I taught in my class. Oh, beautiful. So excited. So again, if y'all have any questions, whether you are on YouTube or Behance, as Anna goes through her workflow, make sure to drop them in the chat and we'll ask them throughout the chat, the, throughout the live. Sounds good. Okay. So let me just get set up here. So um, now we're in Photoshop for the web. And again, this is going to just be a really, really useful tool, no matter where you are working from, because everything's going to show up right here. If you're logged into Adobe, it's going to keep track of everything for you. So mm -hmm. I have all the things I've been working on, as well as different collabs I've been doing with people. Um, all of that is going to be able to be shared across platforms and across different computers. Mm -hmm. And I, um, towards the end, I will show everyone the new share for review feature. Um, and that's going to keep everything synced up as well. Perfect. And I hope that it wants to cooperate with me today because <laughs> sometimes it doesn't want to work. So <laughs> fingers crossed today will yes. be the day that everything will go smoothly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, I just click new file and I'm just going to go to custom. And then I usually like to do eight by 10 or 16 by 20, um, for, uh, Instagram proportions and then also big enough that I could print it too. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to go eight by 10 for the sake of size and files. Now we might want to rename it first, talking about mm -hmm. from yesterday, yes. forgetting to name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we talked a, a bit about naming and making sure you're, you know, you can track all of your files and track everything you're doing well. <laughs> yep, exactly. I realized that um, from most of the past <laughs> images that I made, I never named them. So yeah. <laughs> today we are naming it. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just come down here to place image. Um, so yeah, you can see real quick, you can see all your tools here on the left, pretty much the same as Photoshop for desktop. Um, they're just gonna be like a little more basic than what all the options that we have on desktop. 
but it's going to be enough to at least get you started. And again, as I said, like getting these ideas out on paper or digitally is the most important part, in Absolutely. my opinion, of the creative process. Absolutely. Yeah, because if you forget why you're going to do something or set something up, then you've kind of lost the idea. Mm hmm. Um, then you have your layers panel over here, very similar to desktop. You have your um, properties. You have your quick actions, which is going to be like remove background, um, some different effects and filters. Uh, and then you have your comment section down here, which is um, if you are doing that share for review, which I will show you all at the end. Um, and you can pin them and circle them and write your comments mm. in. And then... Um, uh, your document info down here. So I'm just going to turn that all off, keep the layers open. Um, and we're going to start with place image. So I love that this is right down here, makes it yeah. super easy. And we're going to grab it from our computer. And I am going to get this raw image right here. So this is going to open up in um, Camera Raw, which mm -hmm. is like a very, very incredible, powerful tool that we have here on Photoshop for the web. And this is going to be the same Camera Raw that is in um, Photoshop and the same type of features that are in Lightroom as okay. we played with yesterday for yes. your stream. Yes, yes. <laughs> So I'm just going to brighten this a little bit. Um, I usually don't do too much color grading or anything right off the bat. I just kind of get it to a place that I feel somewhat happy with and then kind yeah. of do that at the end. This is being like a little glitchy. I don't know why, but. It's not looking um, glitchy on my end, so. <laughs> okay, good, good. <laughs> Um, then you have all of your color mixing options, just as you do in classic mm -hmm. camera roll and Lightroom, which gives this again, another powerful, um, feature. So we can just adjust that color a little bit. Beautiful. Um, yeah. I yeah. love how everything's just so easily there for you. Totally. I know it makes it like way way easier when you're just mm. trying to get some things done quickly exactly little noise reduction it's funny because i've made this image now probably close to 10 times and <gasps> every just in the past like two weeks and every time i do it it's different and i do a different process i'm like you, what am i <laughs> you know sometimes it'd be like that sometimes Depending on how you're feeling today, you might yep. go for a different look and a different vibe. Exactly. Exactly. It's so funny. Okay. So now we can place this. I know that I want it semi near the top of the canvas here. Um, by the way, this is Bass Harbor Lighthouse in Maine. Um, absolutely mm. incredible. So, so crowded. So be warned, Instagram versus reality is a very real <laughs> thing here. <laughs> But um, yeah, Acadia is just a stunning place. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, so now I'm gonna place a couple more images, kind of starting to just roughly build out my scene here on web, and then um, we'll move it over to desktop. So, excuse me, trying to get over this cold. <laughs> I know I'm feeling a little bit of a cold over here. It's it's cold enough here in Arizona where we don't have to. Uh use your ac anymore we're getting into uh, you yeah. know and when i say cold like i think it was like 70 something like i don't know i think, I think, I think it's like 60s outside today to be honest so it's really beautiful weather yeah yeah but it's it, like a I nice can, fall day here mm -hmm, but, but i can feel <laughs> i know i know it's like the seasons change mm -hmm. and our bodies are like excuse me <laughs> yep <laughs> um so i know just uh, based on this image that I want to flip it horizontal when I'm compositing, mm. sometimes I don't always know what I want to do uh, and things will change as I go along. But in this one, um, one of the key for really nice composites is paying attention to where the original light source was coming from. Mm. So in this one, even though, let me just move this down, even though it's sunset and there is no main light source here, we know that the sun set somewhere over here. Mm -hmm. And so, and we have some light coming here. Um, our shadows are directed on this backside of the rock. And so the light is going to be coming from this direction. Mm -hmm. 
Um, now in surrealism, fantasy, all things composited, you can get away with kind of doing whatever you want. Um, and I do take a big advantage of that sometimes. And especially when people are like, that lighting's not right. I'm like, yeah, but it's my dream land. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in this case, I kind of want to keep that direction from here um, into the underwater cave. So I'm just going to flip it horizontal. And now Ooh. that feels a little bit better. Yeah. And so we're just kind of getting this placed um, somewhat where I want it. And yeah, that makes a big difference with the feel of both of the images now that the, yes. the lighting is, is matching in, in both photos. Yes, definitely. Yeah, it just kind of helps get it looking mm -hmm. semi more realistic. Mm -hmm. So uh, then we're going to place another image and um, I'm going to get this water line here and this is going to come in as a raw again as well. I don't really need to adjust this. I could just click done, but I think I'll just bring the exposure up a little bit. Mm. Um, and uh, just kind of get it into better lighting. My friends took this photo in Tahiti. It's a whale. You can kind of see oh, it down I there. Oh, I see it. Oh, yeah. wow. Maybe if we bump the shadows. Yep. So we're actually go. not going to be using that beautiful whale today, but <laughs> it's there. <laughs> <laughs> it may, it's there for us to so just see real quickly. Yeah. We have a question, Anna, for you. So yes. when selecting a camera, if I get, so I guess this, the topic is one selecting camera. If I get one that doesn't support raw, would it hurt the quality of my work? Can it be, can it hurt composites? Thank you. Um, I would say no. Like I, I'm not sure how many cameras don't support raw. I feel like mm -hmm. most of them do. Even iPhones support raw nowadays. Mm -hmm. Um, so the only reason for working with raw images is that it's gonna give you more information baked into that photo. So if you um if your image was extremely uh underexposed or overexposed, you'd be able to bring back that information in editing. Mm -hmm. However, if you're working with a JPEG, um, because it's not going to be as powerful as a raw image, but because of some of these new editing features in Photoshop um, and Lightroom, you might be able to kind of uh, fake it and mm -hmm. make it look make it look semi good still. So I, I think if you absolutely don't have raw capabilities, it's not going to hurt the quality of your work. I think you just won't be able to pull back as much information. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Azar? Yeah, I would agree okay. with that. And but I, I also do agree that um, I feel like I'd be surprised to know what cameras don't. I know um, support raw, um, and so I think that'll be interesting to see there. But you should still have at least with, like you said, all these new features, some more freedom than you would have had before for sure. Yeah, I'm thinking that um, definitely it it should have raw mm -hmm. um, since our phones do too. So. Um, okay, so I just went to the quick selection tool over here. So you have um, the object selection as I was just showing you all in Photoshop for the desktop. You have your mag magic wand, your lasso, all the things that we're kind of used to in Photoshop for the desktop. And so what I wanna do here is just try to get that water line as good mm -hmm. as we can, and then we can kind of touch it up. Beautiful. Yep, and Sam agreed that most modern cameras should support RAW, especially if you're using a DSLR or mirrorless. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm just, I'm holding down shift to add here and mm -hmm. then um, option to subtract. Perfect, you're getting that waterline pretty, pretty clean. Yeah. And I'm just kind of doing it the best I can for now. Um, and then I can go back in and continue to fix my mask. And when we move it to desktop, you'll be able to see that all of these things that you do on web are gonna continue on to desktop and be fully editable. Mm -hmm. So we'll just make our mask and then go to our move tool and bring this down to start beautiful. to create that water line. Oh, beautiful. Thanks. Okay, hey, looking good. Now we're gonna place one more. Let's 
see where I put it. File organization, very important. There we go, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so we got another roll here. Mm -hmm. Just gonna do a little bit of brightening. Now, what all went into, did you draw a, um, did you make a drawing before you kind of figured out what you wanted to composite for this image or did you already, how did you have in mind what you wanted? Yeah, great question. Um, so this one came about actually when I we were in Maine a few weeks ago and I was standing in front of the lighthouse looking at it <laughs> and I was thinking, and I kind of see the world this way now because of the type of art I create, but I started thinking, wouldn't this be cool if there was some sort of like underwater kingdom beneath the lighthouse? Mm. Uh, and then I believe on, I think on paper, again, paper is still uh, your best friend, no matter yeah. what. <laughs> um, I just kind of roughly sketched out like, okay, if I had the lighthouse above water, a water line, and I knew I had the water lines from previous work that I did mm -hmm. on the last stream. Um, and then I found a cool um, underwater cave on Adobe stock. So I just, I kind of like just in the drawing put cave openness something with light down here and then i mm -hmm. knew i wanted like a subject so sometimes mm -hmm. the sketches are very rough they're just kind of like circles x's mm -hmm. like a map for myself to follow when i start working got it got it yeah it's so to see it come from literally just like a map into you know what it, whatever it is that you end up creating yeah and oftentimes i end up changing a lot too mm -hmm. like i'll sometimes kind of sketch something out in my head and then once i start gathering my images for <clears throat> excuse me for it um sometimes it will change a little based on the stock photos that i get or mm -hmm. um or like if i'm shooting it myself so yeah um, okay, so for this, I know she's going to be under the water, so I'm just kind of placing her and then select subject. We'll see how good of a job that does. Beautiful. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put it together for Adobe Sensei. Yes. Thank you so yes. much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we'll mask her just like that. So this is just so, so amazing. Yep, so easy, so quick. And just again, saving time is everything. So yep. the more time you can save while working, that that's no, nah, that's 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 everything. Exactly, it really, really is. And uh, yeah, like we, what we were talking about yesterday with um, you know painting people's faces in the old school mm -hmm. way versus now it just registering automatically. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so I think that's pretty good. We are going to open in desktop app and hope that it works. So normally this will just seamlessly go right over. Let's see. It's coming. And yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Don't you love when these things work? Yes. Like it just makes me so happy. Just a click of a button. <laughs> yep. And so you can see we have all of our edits over here um, mm -hmm. with our layer mass and everything just as we need it. Okay, so first um, I want to just touch up this water line a little bit here and fix the layer mask. So normally when I'm fixing layer mask, um, I'm gonna just use my brush tool and mm -hmm. not really a new feature of Photoshop by any means, but this is in my opinion, one of the ways to um, to get like the best, smoothest mm -hmm. uh, layer masking. Oh, hey, hey Zeus, thanks for coming. <laughs> How was your experience at Max? It was so much fun. I oh. loved it. Yeah. Did you go? I didn't get to go. I, I attended virtually. I'm hoping next year that I'll be in person. Um, but it didn't plan out. I didn't plan it out well enough to go. So <laughs> Oh man, it would have been but so fun I to know, meet you. I know. But I, next year I'm already I'm I'm claiming that one. I'll be there next year. <laughs> yes. Yes, we definitely have to hang out. Okay. So I'm just using um, X to switch between my foreground and background mm -hmm. color. This would be a lot easier if I was using a tablet and not a mouse and live streaming. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we talked a little bit about that yesterday too. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's always so nerve wracking. It is, it is. 
it's like no matter how many times you do this live it's still not easy to live edit Mm -mm. it isn't (laughs) and I feel like I always go back and I'm like oh I should have done this or why didn't I you know I know it is what it is you y'all get the point (laughs) yeah exactly and I'm just kind of uh roughly going along here Mm -hmm. and getting this edge back in and like normally I've said this before on live streams like normally when I do any sort of fine detail work like this whether it's color grading or layer masking like the layer mask alone I I will sit for like over an hour just Mm -hmm. refining it and talk about not having a speedy workflow (laughs) (laughs) sometimes things just take you just gotta you gotta just spend the time yep exactly so um now one of my favorite things you've probably heard me say this a million times if you watched my other streams Mm -hmm. but one of my favorite things is flow um and so using flow to control the amount of color you're placing down or Mm -hmm. the um, amount of layer mask that you are revealing or hiding so in this case i want to kind of um blend my water down into the underwater cave and so i'm just going to take a nice low flow here and um, a big brush and we want to be painting with white and Mm -hmm. we're just going to kind of brush that in and even though i'm using a mouse i'm still doing um like almost brush strokes with my mouse Mm -hmm. yeah like you're painting yeah exactly and then we can kind of like I really like this area here mm-hmm. where the yeah, light that's... is coming down from the surface almost like it's glowing yes cool beautiful, I get sucked beautiful. in and forget to talk because I'm I like know, I... <laughs> ah. <laughs> It's so funny because you, you you do that. And then yesterday I had this whole ASMR <laughs> moment where I get sucked in and I'm talking to myself. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm it's... forgetting I'm all live. <laughs> it's so funny how that happened. <laughs> like, da, da, da. Hmm? okay. So it's that mesmerizing. looks mesmerizing. Yep, exactly. Um, that looks pretty good for the waterline. I feel good about that. And we will color grade that later. Um, and then ideally, the nice thing with this being a cloud document is that I don't have to remember uh, to save anything. Like it's automatically uh, saving. That's nice. That's nice. Especially because I, I don't know how many times y'all have done this or Anna, how many times you've done it where you thought you saved something and you realized you didn't save it. That's exactly. beautiful that this is automatic for you. So you don't have to worry about it. Yes, exactly. So um, it should update back here on Photoshop for the web. We'll let it sit for a while. But um, like that's what's so great about these cloud Mm -hmm. documents going back and forth is they're going to continue to update across Mm -hmm. platforms. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is let's just do a little sky replacement on here. So we're going to come up to sky replacement. And I think um, a new feature of Photoshop is that um, sky replacement is always continuing to improve, Mm -hmm. Um, getting better and better selections, getting better um, ability to really sense that background. I mean, look at how it cut out these trees. That is so (laughs) crazy, especially like all the, it just looks so clean and so smooth. Yeah, yeah. And I used to not use Sky Replacement because sometimes Mm. it would look a little weird. And Mm -hmm. now I use it all the time because it's gotten so So much better. Yeah. Um, So for anyone not familiar with Sky Replacement, you can click this little drop down here and you have all of these different skies that are already programmed into Photoshop. You have your blue skies, spectacular and sunsets. Um, And then you can add in your Mm. own by clicking this little plus icon down here. Beautiful. So I've dropped in a bunch of my own so we can um, do whatever today. So wow. Yeah, the last time I made this image um, and the one that I showed, I used this sky. I flipped it, Um, but I would, let me see. So it's kind of like that. We'll adjust it a little. Um, I'd like to know from the chat, though, what sky do you want to see? Because, like, it'd be fun to mix this up a little. Yes, yes. Okay, so this is option one. What's option two? 
So we have all of these as options. We got some different sunsets. Yes. Um, we got some northern lights, which I am big sucker for oh, northern lights. I, I love the northern lights. It's, it's Me too. gives that sci fi feel to it. Uh, and it's just like, it's a fantasy world. So that I think right, yes. is, is my vote. Let's okay. see what the, chat, what the chat has to say. What sky do y'all want to see in this final image? Yes. Um, we have some Ooh. like asteroids, which is pretty cool. That could be kind of fun. And it's just so Ooh. clean how it. Yeah. Like, like wow. unbelievable. Look at that. It's like perfectly cut out. It even got behind the lighthouse in here. Wow. Like, Okay, I can't zoom in when I'm in there, but we could look at that. Um, I have like a storm, which we could adjust. Um, like, a, ooh, that one's cool oh, too. That's beautiful. It's so hard. This was the hardest thing when I was first making this image and deciding what to teach for Adobe Max. Um, I was like, oh my God, I can't decide which sky. <laughs> Uh, so we have some comments. So someone said, what about a stormy sky to contrast the calmness under the surface? Ooh, so there was cool. one. Um, okay. Someone said, ooh, I haven't seen the uh, the asteroid one. So that's another option. Um, someone said, I like the one with the massive moon. Another cool. option. <laughs> so many good options. I'll uh, just keep clicking through. Let me know. Um, and then we can decide. We have a bunch of different types yeah. of northern lights here we have um like bluer greener we have some different sunsets okay asteroids maybe another mm -hmm. vote for that um this is i'm just so blown away with how clean each I one know. looks like regardless of how just with all the stars the clouds the moon it just is so seamless the lightning in the shot it's so seamless in every single Regardless of whichever one you use. That's beautiful. I know. I know. It's so awesome. I cannot decide. And then where did you pull all of these images from? Um, most of these are Adobe stock. Yeah, you can okay. see when I hover. Beautiful. Yep. Beautiful. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with Adobe stock. So the way that you can just easily just kind of pick and grab, add to your image. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe maybe this is my favorite. I know that one's really cool. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know either. And I really love. Oh, I love the the, the mystical fantasy vibe. I don't think I we know. have a, a. I've seen either a stormy sky, <laughs> asteroid, or the massive moon. Those are the three options that I have seen that people have commented on. So yeah. whoever, let's see who. One more comment. What do you what 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 sky do you all prefer? Let's see if we can get one more comment. Yeah, we need some big votes in here. Yes, we need a vote. We need to be clear and come together as a group and say, you know what, we're <laughs> going this way. This is the direction we're going in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see, we could always change it later too. But very true. Very true. Oh my god, I was so stuck. I was really into this one. I was really into um, <coughs> this one, mm -hmm. and then one of the Northern Lights. Ugh. I don't. I think it was uh, this one. That How is about... so beautiful. The chat is quiet. The chat is quiet. <laughs> the chat. The chat is quiet. Okay, let's see. I don't know. Should we do the moon? Would I flip it? Oh, the moon is actually stunning. Yeah, that's really cool. Especially um, that when you flipped it. I know, because then you're matching that light still. Mm -hmm. So now it makes sense. Like yeah. you kind of have this. Yeah. I, I think I'm voting now. For, I've changed my mind so many times. I'm I know. <laughs> <laughs> I literally I, did this. Like I had to do multiple options and send it to people and be like, which one? And I still <laughs> couldn't decide. <laughs> Yeah, Sam said so many options. So I think we're just going to have to make a choice. Are we going to go with the moon? I think we should go with the moon. Yeah, because let's go with it's, the moon. Like, it's Halloween. You know, mm, we got some true. witchy vibes. Let's true. just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah Ryan, Ryan said, <laughs> said, follow your heart. <laughs> My heart always says moons. If anybody <laughs> knows me, it's always moons. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, it fits the, the theme. Halloween is coming up. So it sounds like this is the best option. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, okay, so it's getting a little wonky. Hmm, trying to decide what would be best here. So it's getting like a little strange uh, down in this corner for the mm -hmm. masking. Sometimes you or you can fix that. Um, I don't know if we'll get into it today, but that is one thing to consider when you're choosing skies. Like the reason these sunsets work so well is because it was already sunset. So you're mm -hmm. matching that same lighting. You're matching that same yeah. sky. Um, so if you knew you wanted to do a sky replacement with the northern lights or the moon, um, you might want to already have like a nighttime scene and shoot it on a tripod and make sure yeah. everything has that correct look. Absolutely. Okay, so let's see. I'm just kind of playing around with these sliders till I get something that looks good. Mm -hmm. um, and... Sometimes, you know, as you were doing yesterday uh, with the sliders for making things like look really nice, I do the exact same thing in Photoshop mm -hmm. and it really seems to kind of like help the workflow. Yep. Just go back and forth, let your eye kind of decide which direction you want to go in. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's see. Got our foreground lighting. Maybe we want to adjust that a little bit. that's pretty good for now yeah that's beautiful so it's going to come out into all of these different layers and um, we can kind of like fix that up if we needed to mm -hmm. later on right so beautiful. now we got our sky replacement this is gonna throw me off though now i just realized <laughs> that i had my whole plan for color grading based on the sunset oh! <laughs> that's okay working on the fly yes working on the fly working on the fly follow your heart Anna follow yes. your heart <laughs> okay let me see here <clears throat> I have to get back in the zone all right so with the sunset um I had had a difficult uh uh, a challenge presented for myself mm -hmm. because I had to um, blend this water line to make it match and be more red and have those warmer tones of sunset. But actually now maybe this made my life easier. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so once I kind of get to this point of everything, then um, I start to do some of the fun color grading and we can um, really work on that and then start to create some glowing effects, uh, bring everything together in camera raw, and then um, we'll share it out for comments um, in an imaginary world, mm -hmm. and we'll see what kind of timing we have left from there. Okay, perfect, sounds like a plan. Cool. All right, so I am a big fan of curves. I know many people sometimes will choose levels, or brightness contrast. I've always uh, loved curves because I think that it gives you a really um, broad range of mm -hmm. editing abilities. You can go from RGB, which is controlling your brightness and your dark darkness um, into your red, green, and blue channels. So um, I'm just gonna bring this down. I wanna make sure that I am clipped to my water line. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm just gonna kind of adjust this a little bit and what we're gonna do is bring back those areas of lightness hey all right perfect so now painting with black we are gonna just um the nice low flow again mm -hmm. start to reveal some of these areas yes Just, you're a painter now just painting that back yeah <laughs> i know like yesterday we were getting some bob ross vibes mm -hmm. gonna continue that on <laughs> <laughs> with our happy little trees beautiful <clears throat> and so also, i oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead oh <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, if y'all have any questions, make sure y'all drop them in the chat. That way we can yes. ask Anna throughout the rest of the live. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> um, so I tend to 
do most of my Photoshop work in like a painter illustrator style mm. um, versus uh, more technical, like okay. some people do. Like, um, you know, a lot of people that I have learned from, like Aaron Nace is someone who I learned a lot from. He's very much, and, and Jesus Ramirez as well. Like they're mm. both kind of people who will put in the number of something um, or do it like a more technical way whereas mm -hmm. I have um, like an illustrator background yeah um, so I tend to put that kind of energy into Photoshop mm. and so I think it's it's totally whichever way you feel comfortable with. yeah I definitely do agree I feel like I um, I have that same kind of artist background where it's like you just visually want to see it and you just kind of I'm not technical at all yeah I, technicality freaks me out <laughs> yes exactly me too so I just like to play around and just kind of you know see what I can get essentially and sometimes yeah. you have though that's where those like those um accidents happen and they end up being really really great and yeah like, oh there you go exactly that's how I am too like I'm much more about playing around and mm -hmm. seeing what works and then sometimes like I'll learn something new and then it becomes part of my workflow from yeah. then on out. But then I also will stick to like the old school mm -hmm. ways too. I'm like, there's probably a faster way to do this. I could yeah. use harmonies. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I know. I should probably try that with the water. <laughs> but, um, you know, I got to show you all both ways. So let's see. Just going to give this a little bit of color grading here. Mm. Um, and again, just kind of playing with it. <laughs> the only thing that was, as I was saying, interesting with a sunset is like it gave this much more of a challenge we had to overcome. Mm -hmm. um, we could replace it at the end once we get to everything. Um, let me just actually show you real quick. So yeah, the coloring. Yeah, you can yeah. see here um, by go to my water line. So yeah, this is what we started with. And in the new one with the moon, it's going to be a little bit easier because the colors mm -hmm. match. But then we drastically lowered the curves um, and did it even more. And then a little brightness contrast. And then um, I think in the one that I did before this, I even added like a pop of color in here, which we'll yeah. do in our new one. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, that's the beautiful so fun no i love that especially because as you're adding each layer to show us what you're doing it just looks more and more like it's it looks more like the scene and you're paying attention yeah. to so much detail you know and i think that's really really important especially when you're doing compositing you want to pay attention to detail to make it look as real i mean we know it's not real but it looks as real as it potentially can you're like wow i want to be there definitely um, so that's really beautiful yeah thanks Okay, so I'm just kind of playing around here. Let's see. Um, I'm thinking as I go. Um, I think <laughs> I'll leave that for now. And let's play around with um, underneath and start to blend in our diver here. Mm -hmm. And if anybody has any suggestions for how we should edit this and color grading and stuff, please let me know because this is definitely like more of a collaborative piece um, yes. than the other one was so I'd like to kind of make this super funky we can add some <laughs> things I know last time I did an underwater scene we got like fish and a treasure chat oh. treasure chest <laughs> yeah it went it went real crazy so um I'm just gonna do a little color grading here on the water and I almost want to give this a bit of contrast or something yeah. like I don't I feel like it shouldn't be as blue yeah I agree let's see maybe we make it Ooh, that's, that's beautiful. Cool. Yeah, we are going for Halloween vibes right mm -hmm. exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> It's like a radioactive ocean or something. No, oh, that's beautiful. <coughs> <laughs> Oliver said underwater pirate ghost. Yes. 
And then Ryan, I like the line from the moon following the dark cloud as it transitions to the water and you have a similar line with the backlit cave opening. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Yeah, it kind of like comes down here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, just kind of seeing how this looks, um, playing around a little bit. And then we can also um, come in and change the blending mode mm. of the adjustment layer. Um, and sometimes that's really nice because you can get a bit of a different effect. Let's see. Like sometimes it's a little too much, but we can mm -hmm. always lower the opacity. The, yeah. Or, yeah. Whoa. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Maybe we. Is Hugh doing anything different? That looks kind of cool. I can't tell. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's yeah. just softening it a it's little soft. bit. Yeah, it is. That's really nice. So that's just kind of like a really mm -hmm. nice effect there. Um, and then let's start to. See, build this out. Um, okay. Just gonna adjust my sky a little bit and try to get this back to a place. Let's see, that line. We want that line coming from the moon to really yes. match up. Cool. Let's see. So Daniel said, select the lighthouse layer. Neural yes. filters, harmonization. Yeah, we could definitely try that. That could be cool. an option there. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, because I showed this to start. Might as well use it in our piece, right? Exactly. Why not? So choose moon layer. Yeah. I just really love the... It's just giving like two different worlds and it's yeah. just so nice like yeah it's looking really cool yeah okay so let's see so this is with nothing we're pretty warm on our lighthouse mm -hmm. layer and then um definitely giving mm -hmm. like better color yep yeah i that. agree and then hmm, maybe we adjust it a little. I always like to go really blue in my images. I have to like chill out, tone it down sometimes. <laughs> but I'm really digging like, I feel like we should go for green water. Yeah, I, I think the green water is just so, like, I like the contrast and it's just so like, again, that whole two different world feeling that I'm getting, I, I think that's really beautiful there so I, I i'm i'm loving the green yeah yeah let's see and then if we oh we could make that like nice and icy up yes top. yes and then we have some comments um someone said probably need to bump up the blues a bit and so I, I... yeah let's do it Ooh, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> anything blue like Okay, I don't want it to blend too much though. I don't yes, want to like lose yes. it. But I feel wants... like, yeah, what do you all think? I feel like this looks pretty cool. Yeah, this is really nice. And then I think what I want to do, what we can uh, do towards the end is like really pop this red in here because mm -hmm. I like to have images where they have some sort of contrast and those complementary colors. Yes. So we'll get that going. We're just flowing along. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so we close that um, and let's see. Let's... What kind of advice would you have for someone that is getting into doing photo compositing? Um, so I guess I would say my biggest advice would be um, to start with easy composites um, mm -hmm. where they have the same light source and maybe you're like this one's a pretty easy composite i think you mm -hmm. could do this um fairly simply 
um, and look for where the light is coming from. And as you start compositing your your pieces together, make sure those images have um, the same light source. Mm -hmm. So if you say you have like your background, your foreground, and then you have a model standing in the center, then make sure your model is lit with the same lighting as your foreground. It, and yeah. that's going to make it a lot easier. Um, and then uh, kind of having some sort of starting place, like what I was talking about with my map that I use, mm -hmm. um, that has helped me to create better composites because I kind of can uh, play out what things will look like. And mm -hmm. then um, in many cases, what I would do, let me just show you this real quick. Um, uh, let's see. Mm, uh, I'm going to go new file and let's open these up. This is what I would do if I didn't know how I was setting up my image, but I had mm -hmm. like a rough idea. Um, and normally I start like this, but because we started on web and I, mm -hmm. because I already kind of knew, uh, it was a little bit of a different process. Oh my God. What am I doing? <laughs> Okay, just kind of doing this quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, I would start to place things in and then I would like lower the opacity. Mm. And then that's where, that's how I start compositing to be like, okay, well, now I can see that maybe this would look cooler if this was flipped and go transform, flip horizontal. And then I can yeah. start to see that like now these rocks are matching yes, up yes. and then I could be like, well, okay, what else does this need? And so I might open up, um, this underwater shot and maybe I use a different diver on this one. And bring it up okay and then um like lower the opacity on her mm -hmm. to get her into place and so i do all of that before i start cutting anything out before i start sizing things like mm -hmm. just really getting kind of like an overall sense of how I want things to lay out. And then that helps my composites for the composition. Mm, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for showing us. And then Ryan said, have you used snapshot feature in the history panel? It's awesome if you want to explore different avenues and are afraid to lose what you have now. No, I have not. Um, Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, thanks. Um, Let's see. Is that create new document from current state? Oh, oh. interesting. Hmm. Well, that's an option. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I will have to try that. Yeah. That's really, really awesome. Always learning new things. Yes. Yeah, that would be really helpful if you wanted to experiment with something because usually I will um, just make a whole new document. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's keep going with some green vibes here. And I'm going to, let's let's use harmonization on our diver and see if oh, we can do yes. that. Oh, yes. Okay, we're gonna go to our cave. Oh, nice, yep. nice, nice. And yeah, like this is so cool. I love this yeah, feature. It's beautiful. And it's just, again, so easy time saver. Yeah, like she just blends, blends in, in so nicely. Mm -hmm. This is one of those things that I just want to like greatly play around with. <laughs> <laughs> like just keep toggling the sliders. Ooh, kind of a little yellow. How green should we go? <laughs> you know? 
That's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Just again, so easy. And now it's just like she's just so part of that scene. Yeah. Yeah, that looks really good. So yeah, let's click OK. Really um, and then this is before and this is after. Yep. It really looks like she's now blended into yep. that water. I think that's my favorite feature that you've shown. And Daniel just put in there too. Um, yeah. That yeah. is beautiful. And then I wonder, hmm, like trying to think of other ways I could blend her in and keep it going. Um, yeah, that's such a nice tool. Mm -hmm. And so before, after. after. Yep. Yeah, look at that. Yep. Okay, so something else that I like to do when I'm kind of blending everything together is, and this is one of my little like painterly techniques and mm. not really like a true Photoshop thing, um, is, oh, Daniel's saying you can apply that as a smart filter to yes. So it's yes. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I make a new layer and then on using my brush tool, I will... Um, hold down option and again, using a nice low flow, um, I will make sure, or I will hold down option and then sample my, my color around mm -hmm. whatever my subject is, and then just start to kind of like paint onto it. Mm -hmm. And I do this a lot when I'm blending different sceneries together or trees or something, and I kind of want it to match in. Mm -hmm. And so it's not really <laughs> like again, a technical way of doing Photoshop, but it's something that I've found has really helped yeah. make everything look nice. No, that's really beautiful. Cause again, you're just, you're just further blending her into that scene. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of lowering the, the opacity on that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can choose a different blend mode if that seems to fit mm -hmm. best. Um, and we can just see like before and after, yeah. before and after. So just, oh, and we want to make sure, sorry, we want to make sure that it's clipped. Yes. So there we go. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Our diver is looking good. Yeah. That's looking really good. And then normally, like if I had a lot of time, what I would probably do too is just um, come in and either shrink her mask or again, using like these painterly techniques, because I think it really gives that nice look is I would just um, clean up her mask a little mm -hmm. bit in here. So that's for another time because it takes too long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's see. We are starting to get some craziness here. Yes. We have to um, name our layers. Yes. <laughs> so her name is says, so I'm just calling it coloring says um and painting yeah that's something i don't normally do <laughs> as we talked about yesterday naming is not for us naming our, our layers is not for us it's for everyone no. else <laughs> yeah naming of layers is for the week yep. just kidding <laughs> um, jk jk <laughs> jk Let's play around with some selective color to kind of yes. see if we can add in some extra green here. Love it. I think okay. um, yesterday I was talking about color grading and I was trying to remember what tool I usually use in um, Photoshop to do a lot of my color grading and it's selective color. Yeah. I love selective color. It's funny because I used to use it a lot more mm -hmm. um, and haven't really used it too much. Oh lately but i was really feeling it today beautiful yeah i use it a lot in my um my portraiture work it just again just all the flexibility you have with the coloring totally you just get some cool cool options it is so hard for me to do this green because i'm such a blue person but yesterday <laughs> i was very inspired by your green yes the we money green <laughs> yes we need to start bringing it into the yes. images now she's not going to match as well anymore. We might need to redo her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the influence of the green. Yes. And let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's kind of funky. Yeah. I don't know. What's everyone thinking? Yes. What are y'all's thoughts? Do you like the green? 
you preferred the, what what are your feelings yeah let us so know this, in the chat this was the original one that i taught and we are mm -hmm. going far off script far today off. <laughs> <laughs> i know i'm like what am i doing i lost <laughs> every thought i had in my head <laughs> But uh, yeah, you know, we can always switch it up. I'm still like leaning towards this yes. more cyan look. I, I think so as well. The okay. green is very, I love the green, but I think it's it's a huge, it's very off from everything else, whereas the cyan blends a bit more. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. yeah let's delete that. Oh, okay. Steve said green. Oh, we oh, got a vote. Okay, I'll just we got a keep it. vote. Okay, um, Daniel said I love the compos the composite. The disparity between the two environments environments mm. creates an interesting tension. That is what yes. I love the most. It is literally like it just the tension it creates between the two spaces. It's literally yeah. like, to me, um, especially with all the conversation around, around the Little Mermaid, it's like this whole different world underground, underwater that we do not know under the sea. Yes. And it's just the contrast between what life looks like under there and then the life above. So I really I love, love that. that. Yeah, I really, really love that. And it's something that um, I actually didn't really even think about because I I for sure tend to create pieces that don't have as much visual tension that are mm -hmm. more just kind of like um, a place where people can go and relax in yeah. some of the images. But I think in creating this visual tension um, and difference and yeah, like creating this world underneath mm -hmm. the world um, makes for a more interesting composite. Yeah. Absolutely. And then Daniel, the moonlight version creates a certain mysterious quality to it. Agreed. Definitely. Okay. So how are we looking with, um, let me turn that off with our coloring. Does that still look okay on her? I think so. she's more, she's, she's a little blue. blue. Yeah. She's a little bit blue. Yeah. So let's, um, Ooh. Actually, Sam is asking, do we want a poll for the green or cyan? Oh, yeah. Can we yes. do like we, a legit poll? Can we get a legit poll? That would be really nice. <laughs> that would be sweet. <laughs> I'm just making this a whole interactive stream yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling a little we wanna, sick, a little we, tired. We, we, we so want to hear from else. the people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Let's see. Okay, so I'm just going to color grade her how I normally would. Just a touch. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'm just having fun. <laughs> yes, Sam, just two options. The green and then, um, and can we see what that cyan looks yes. like again? So, so green oh, wait, or let cyan? Let me zoom out so you can oh, see. Oh, perfect. That. So green or cyan? Those are our two options. Oh, look at that. He dropped a link. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, cool. Cool. I love it. Yes, yes. So y'all go ahead and go vote. And then Sam, if you can let us know what the winner is. Yeah. That'll be great. Yes, that sounds perfect. Um, okay, so um, Daniel brought up a good point here a little while back about the fact that I accidentally um, put the harmonization directly onto this layer. So there's a big mistake oh. that I did. I made it destructive and um, oh, now I can't go back yeah. and touch up that blue that I did. So mm -hmm. that's something you always want to make sure you're working on smart objects yes. um, as well as um, making sure that anything you do is on a new layer. I tend to not use smart objects that often when mm -hmm. I'm like working without anyone watching me because I just forget and uh, I know <laughs> that's bad form, a little sloppy, but you know, I'm human too. It's the yeah. truth of it. So absolutely. And good catch on that, Ryan yeah um okay so maybe i want to do a little color balance here <clears throat> oh you know what it's gonna need a little bit of reflecting from the green um mm -hmm. so let's play around with this so it's the green water is creating some sort of radioactive glow underneath mm. and um wow oh wow ah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, looks like Cyan is the winner four to one at the moment. Okay. I think we were feeling the Cyan a little bit more as well. So 
I know. Although now I'm feeling the green. The green. That, that gr this going. exactly. That is. Uh. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I'm not gonna leave it like that. I will go back in and fix that. So don't everyone judge me. Um. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we could. Hmm. Maybe I need to just do a better job of the green because what I'm kind of feeling right now is it would be cool if some of this green color uh, from underneath was reflecting up Blessing. onto these rocks. Yep. So yeah. You know what? That is very, very true. Yeah. That'd be interesting to play around with to see what that will look like, especially um, with that water line too. Yeah. Sam says, follow your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, let's see how it goes. Um, also, I see Ryan said, what if the diver was a ghost? We could yes. do that. That would be kind of cool. Um, okay, so let me see. All right, so we're just going to invert this mask, command I. And then um, I have the green color turned on right now. Maybe we'll turn it off. Um, but just to kind of see where this glow is going to fall. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to paint with a nice big brush and a low flow. And we are going to be painting with white. So let's just kind yeah. of like, I don't know if this will look good, but I the idea wanna... I'm following the idea right now. Yeah. It makes sense for the 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 water underneath to reflect on those rocks. Yeah. This is definitely a piece that I'm gonna do for like the hundredth time and then finally <laughs> like sit every time I've done it, it's been for a class or like mm -hmm. prepping it or something. Um and I feel like I wanna sit down with this and put like twenty hours into it yeah. and see what comes out. Yeah, so, you know, we so could just kind of get like a little bit of some light coming up. Mm -hmm. And I think we should still touch up our water line. So yes. as you all can see, this is just like a constant back and forth of what we're creating. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, maybe we split mm -hmm. the difference. How about that? Yeah, actually, I, I like that a lot. Yeah, I feel like that's a good compromise. Mm -hmm. Look at that. We didn't Come even on. need a pole. <laughs> Found a compromise both, between both worlds. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so, all right, let's go back to our water line here. Mm -hmm. And we got our brightness. Yes, okay. And um, I'm going to just bring this down a little bit more. I want to almost make this fully dark here. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, wait. That's a lie. <laughs> um, I am going to add a new curves and give mm -hmm. this like a full darkness. Okay. So that we're not getting anything else. Okay. And... Just keep a little bit of some detail in here. And Jenna said you should do several versions of this and give each one a different mood or feeling. Yeah, I love that idea. I think mm -hmm. that would be really, really cool. So I'm going to invert that and then painting with white and a low flow again. I just want to kind of like darken in these areas. And you could mm -hmm. just do this with... Um, a layer painting with black or like levels but sometimes I just like to do it with curves to yeah. give it more of that control and then we'll bring some of that lightness back in mm -hmm. from the moon that's my favorite part when we get to start painting all the light at the end <laughs> it's just I don't know that it I just the feeling and and of, of painting and and just it's just so nice. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It's just so relaxing. Mm -hmm. That's Even as I'm watching you, I find myself like getting mesmerized, like with yeah. each paint stroke. And then I'm like, wait, you know, I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Don't get sucking into the world. <laughs> it's like full of Anna's on. paint strokes. No. <laughs> I know it's kind of like a curse. I can just stuck everyone in. Yeah. Like full, full Halloween mode. Yeah, full Halloween mode. <laughs> Let us know in the chat. What are you all yes. dressing up as for Halloween? Ah, do you know what I'm you're dressing up as? 
I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of back and forth between what I want to do. I was debating between a mermaid, which is very appropriate mm. for the scene, um, or a moon witch, which is also, also appropriate. appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> also very appropriate. What do y'all, uh, so drop in the chat if you are dressing up for Halloween, what are you dressing up as? Yeah, let us know. I did not realize Halloween is on Monday, so I have no answer to that question. <laughs> I know. I'm like, how did that happen? I, I didn't don't realize. Know. Where okay. did the month go? Seriously. <laughs> okay. So just kind of using a mixture of color balance and curves to get this all blended in and then I know this is a little repetitive and tedious and not new features in Photoshop but we'll keep we'll keep going once we get this mm -hmm. to a place that looks kind of nice yeah it's slowly coming together yeah so I wanted to add some green mm -hmm. um, down below here to start to blend this area because it was just like too blue and didn't yep. have the same matchy vibes yes. There's something weird with this waterline up here that I don't like, but we could fix that later and not worry about it. Mm -hmm. Ryan said, possibly a vampire ninja. My six-year-old son's idea. <laughs> oh, love it. Love it. Okay, and then this color balance, I'm just um, painting with black. I need to kind of get rid of mm -hmm. some of this over here because it wouldn't be coming up as yeah. much on these rocks that's mm -hmm. another thing with compositing like this is clearly for one it's kind of a mess because we're all over the place but mm -hmm. it's also um uh clearly just like a fun surreal idea mm -hmm. but kind of having this general knowledge of how the world works in our eyes what we see uh how lighting works um it will help improve your composites because then like the green glow from down here wouldn't be coming up onto the rocks here yeah. because we have part of the cave blocking it but it might be reflecting up over here mm -hmm. so i i try to kind of look at things when i'm out and about in nature even if i'm not looking at it with my camera um, just look like, oh, okay, I see light coming up. What is it hitting? And yeah. like really studying that. Yeah, absolutely. The study of light is so important when it comes to just really, whether it's composites, photography, it's just very, very important. It tells a whole story. For sure. Yeah, it's like really, really amazing. Um, okay, how are we doing on time? All right. We are doing well. We still have about what, like my timing is off like 30, 30 minutes? minutes yeah 30 minutes okay <laughs> i'm like doing the math in my head uh, <laughs> about 30 I 35 know. minutes <laughs> i know i always am like wait what time do we end <laughs> <laughs> okay so i want to make sure we have time for a few extra things here at the end Ooh. Mm. Hmm. now i'm kind of liking that a little more let me see like, this is the one thing I hate about <laughs> non-destructive <laughs> editing is, like, I'll do something, and then I'm like, ooh, I actually like that without yeah. it. <laughs> so that looks a little bit better. Yeah, and then, I like that. Yeah, so um, many of you have probably seen me do my glow technique, but I want to do mm. that uh, speci specifically for the lighting of this moon, and we'll play around and see if we can do a little bit for the lighthouse um okay I'm so excited for that i'm excited for that color contrast there. yeah that blue and red yes hopefully it works out okay so we clicked or uh, made a new layer and i am going to change this to color dodge that is how you paint glow in mm -hmm. um and then let's just go for kind of like a nice light blue because we're going to be painting this moonlight maybe we mm. want to go a little less green um okay and then you want to double click on this layer i've shown this before in live streams and you have to turn off transparency shapes layer mm -hmm. so that will help you get the glow effect that we are going for and then we're just going to start to paint mm. in this waterline a little bit using a nice low flow and again this is much easier on a tablet yeah. um you know this is where i will spend the bulk of my time like i really will sit down and try to work on this for a couple hours of painting time because the slower you go with the painting and the more um careful you are the mm -hmm. more you mimic real life like the more realistic that piece is going to look yeah absolutely 
if any of you have seen my jellyfish in a bottle, that's uh, where mm. I use this effect. Let me actually bring that up. Yeah, please. Don't judge my desktop. <laughs> <laughs> so this oh, wow. is where I spent probably eight hours or so painting glow and just using this exact same technique, like slowly going along. And this was fully just regular ocean water. Like there was no reflection. There was wow. no bottle here. Everything is composited that you see. Um, and so I just painted along like the reflection, painted in the jellyfish. They were just regular jellyfish, not glowing. Um, everything is created. And wow. that was just very, very slow, slow burn. And how long did you say that took you? I think like eight hours just for the glow wow. itself. I don't remember. Like I don't usually work on things consistently all at mm -hmm. once. Okay. Um, Sometimes it's just, you know, in total, how you take a break, come back. Yeah. Yeah, so um, just kind of going along, having some fun here. I feel like this is looking like a mess, but <laughs> that's all right. I think it's coming together. And then whatever you don't like, you can erase. There you go. Yeah. Yes, you can just... And then sometimes I like to do this final glow on my iPad too. And um, mm. again, like just I'm always looking at that ability to move across devices. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I feel like that is, I oftentimes say, because I, I have my desktop, I have my laptop and I have my iPad. And sometimes you just want to be able to freely move them across all devices and it doesn't feel like a hassle. Sometimes I don't want to sit at my desk. Sometimes I want to watch TV. And, yeah. And you might want to watch TV while you're doing, maybe not while you're doing the brushstrokes because you probably won't be paying attention or you either or, but you just find whatever is most comfortable for you. Exactly. Yes. So um, I switched the color here. So I'm still in yeah. that same layer, still using color dodge. Um, just kind of like amping up some of that green and yes. then going, we can now go over to these rocks and start to build up that glow. And let's see. So there's before, there's yeah. after. Um, the waterline needs a lot of work based on what we did down here. Mm -hmm. But that, again, it's just something that you can build up with a little bit of time. Absolutely. Looking pretty cool. Yes. I love, I love this glow. I might have to actually like play with something along these lines and do some sort of like green ocean like mm -hmm. this and spend some time with it. Cause I never, like I said, never, ever, ever use green in my workflow <laughs> and it's very fun. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to switch it up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Cool. I'm going to for sure play with that. Okay. So. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think here. There's one more new Photoshop feature that I want to show in beta, um, showing the gradients. Um, and we can either do that first and then do this lighthouse glow. Um, yeah, let's do that first. Okay. Let me just save, make sure we're all good. Okay. And let me open Photoshop beta. So anyone can get this. This is a public release mm -hmm. um, and you can use it uh, for gradients. Let's just make sure that it opens. Okay, and we can, let's see. Let's just use this other one for the sake of mm -hmm. time here. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm gonna do is make a new layer and then let me reset everything. Okay. So now in the gradient feature, it used to be so we would make a gradient and it would you would not be able to edit it. But now they've created it so you can do these live gradients mm. where you can bring this across. Now normally this would be Give me one second. So normally this would be set like this. 
Um, so you drag your gradient across and that would be it. But yeah. now with the new gradient, we can go back in and we can continue to edit those colors. And I'm still kind of learning this myself a little bit. Um, so bear with me here. But um, if you, you made your gradient, there it is. Now I need to change this color so I can go in and we can make it green. And then we oh, can wow. make this blue. So, and then we can also adjust it. We can move it around however mm -hmm. we want. We can change the amount of color gradient. Remember with the old gradients, it was so limiting. Like yeah. you had to, you would click and drag and click and drag and nothing was, you couldn't ever get that nice look. Mm -hmm. um, now you can really control it. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, it's such a game changer. That. Um, I'm excited for when it comes into, you can see, I'm still kind of trying to learn it here mm -hmm. myself, but, um, I'm excited for when it comes into regular Photoshop. Yes. That's going to be really great. So, um, let's see here. You can create oh. radial gradients with it. And so now let's say we wanted to kind of, um, build, uh, just reading the chat here. Um, so if we wanted to build maybe like some, a little bit more of the sunset so we can click on our colors and maybe we do yeah. um, like a nice yellow into like a warmish pink. Mm. And then we'll have it coming from, nope, not that. I want it to be coming from here. There we go. There we go, okay. So now I can go down here and control the opacity as well. So I can click on the, we have these two spots here. So I can click on this and I can lower the opacity mm. and start to create my sunset. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's, I just, again, all a lot more control. Um, all of these features, just, again, you have a lot more control and I think Sam had said being able to control the gradient live is so much in this way is so much better, which I completely agree. It just completely transformed your picture, right? This photo. So that's beautiful. Yeah. I know it's amazing. And then you can go through and use, um, you can use the, uh, blending modes too yeah. on this. So we can kind of like the colors look a little bit weird here, but you can mm -hmm. see how easy it is to continue yeah. playing with this and adjusting it. So I can then change the opacity a little bit more if I wanted. Like, yeah, I know yeah. this looks crazy, but <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, so we can no, kind of continue yeah. to play around with those colors until we get them to look right. And then yep. maybe even in this instance, we go into like a blue tone instead of a pink tone. So you can mm, see, yeah, like that yeah. looks way better. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you can add an additional stop here. Um, you should be able oh. to see. want that from up here so you should be able to add another stop there we go there we go yeah um so we could make that like warmer color wow and like you have full control over this mm -hmm. and again i'm gonna have to kind of play with it a bit more myself to get it looking like a proper sunset but mm -hmm. we can you can see go in change the colors add like the amount in between each yeah. change the amount of stops change the opacity like total total game changer for um gradients oh i absolutely love it that's that's that is a game changer for sure yeah isn't that so cool wow. like like you can just really build this out so linear like woo <laughs> It's really fun. Um, and then you can also do different things with it for different sort of effects. That's getting mm -hmm. into like very advanced Photoshop, but in mm -hmm. using like this noise, you can start to create backgrounds with it and mm -hmm. weird swirling stuff and all sorts of things. So, wow. No, that is absolutely amazing. Just so yeah. much creative freedom there. Yeah. Yeah. I love it so much. Um, okay. Let's see. How are we doing with. We have about what 20 a little bit over 20 minutes okay 
All right, so let's um, bring in some light for our lighthouse. Um, and I'm yes. going to show a different glow method that I use. Um, not a new Photoshop feature, just a random thing that I like to do. And then, <laughs> um, and then we'll share for comments. Beautiful. Okay, so um, in this, this is creating glow using a gradient map. And um, so what you want to do here is create, it's been a while, so bear with me. Um, so you want to create two layers. The bottom layer you're going to uh, fill with black. So let's just do that. And then we're going to set it to screen. And then we are going to add a gradient map on top. So this is kind of similar to our gradient stuff. And maybe this is something that might change in the future when we need to do live gradients. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to click on this. We need this to be black and this to be our glow color. Let's see. So we're doing the lighthouse. So we want to do kind of like, ooh, creepy. Very creepy. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of like a reddish orange, I think is good. Yeah. And then let's bring that there. And then we want this to be white. Oh, yes. beautiful. Sam said Anna is the queen of glows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. I will accept that compliment. This looks so cool, but yeah, creepy. Yeah, I love it. Creepy, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to click OK, and we're going to clip this to um, our black layer, and then we're going to put our layer in between. Make sure that is clipped as well. Um, and let's see if this is going to work. Okay, so now painting with white. Yep, there we go. Okay, yep. so now you're basically creating like a glow brush mm, for yourself. Wow. And this is really powerful because um, it allows you to paint a fresh glow without affecting anything in the image. So with the color burn or the color dodge that we are doing when we are painting these glows, it's building off of the background of that image. So it's taking the light areas and it's paying attention to them. It's taking the dark areas and it's not affecting those. Whereas this is purely just like a paint pen. Like mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want with this. So um, I can, I use this sometimes in my pieces. I used to use it a lot more. Lately, I've been using it a little bit less because I don't want as much of a yeah. glow effect. But um, if we turn this down, again, this is better on a tablet because you want to be able to control the pressure as well as be able to quickly erase. Got it. Um, but if we bring the flow down and using a soft brush, make sure we got our hardness all the way down, we can start to kind of build in mm. some of this and just whipping it out of the lighthouse there. So as you can see, it's just creating its own uh, its own effect here. It's not going off of the background. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of do that and then we can radial blur it. So give me one second. Let's kind of get this. Um... Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Sam uses yeah. his technique for painting Paint spell, spell effects. effects. Yep. Nice. Yeah. I'm curious how many other people like use this. I know this is kind of something that not a lot of people use. Yeah, I've never used it. So I'm like, this is a really interesting technique to me. And then let's see, we can go to, um, <laughs> I always have to like try to remember which one I want to use. Um, mm -hmm. I want to do, wait, um, sorry, give me one second. No, I'll take your time. I wasn't planning on doing this today, so now I'm just like totally going <laughs> off like. <laughs> um, let's do. Let's try radial blur. That would be good. Yeah. And we're going to zoom and then you can adjust your zoom. So we'll try to kind of like aim for where this is happening. Mm -hmm. um, and the amount of 10 is good. We'll see how it goes. Click OK. Maybe not enough. Let's do that again. So blur, radial blur, and just do it a little more. 
Yeah. So mm. now we're kind of starting to get like, and we could properly adjust that more, but you know, we can kind of play around with this, spin it a little. And ooh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. That, yep. Yep. That's cool. So then you can um, transform it a little, start to kind of build this out, erase certain areas and um, that's looking pretty cool. Yeah. So then maybe I'll go in with my eraser with a low flow and just kind of whip this out here too. And then this is really cool because we're starting to get some of the bounce up here yeah. onto the clouds, so you don't need it as much down here. Um, and then the great thing with this effect is you can just continue to add layers. So, you know, we don't want to affect that layer anymore because we're happy with that but we want to continue building out this yeah. glow there so i just made a new layer and as long as it's inside this gradient map now i can go in mm. and start to just click and add to that lighthouse yeah glow. Ooh, that's that, so oh, i love that yes so like, and you can see again with some more time, this is going to start to look really, really cool. Um, and you can kind of, this is how I did my other lighthouse image. Uh, let me bring that up. No, that is so, I love that. So this is an older one. I've learned to paint light a lot more as you could see with the um, jellyfish in the bottle but I kind of did a similar effect here um, with the glow and down here. So, wow. yeah. Um, so yeah, then you can kind of just paint a little if you had a tablet, just really going in and yes. getting like those little effects that are gonna make this very realistic. Maybe yes. we even- And then Daniel has a question. What blending oh, yeah. mode is the gradient map set to? Gradient map is set to normal. Mm, I wonder what would okay. happen though, if we change it. Okay, so you can, hmm, cool. So you can change it around if you want mm -hmm. like a different look, um, but I just have it set on normal. Mm -hmm. Although maybe overlay is kind of cool too. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, that gives a nice effect too. Um, and then, so let's just go back to normal. Let me just add one more little burst in here. Um, whoops, painting on the wrong layer. So if we bring our flow, the more you bring your flow up to a hundred, the more you're going to get that pure white, like mm -hmm. centered glow. And then when you bring it nice and low, you'll get kind of just the red yeah. burst around it. Um, so then if we did all that and we wanted to change our gradient, you can always come in here and we can change out this color. Oh, wow. Yeah. So now you can get our nice green radioactive <laughs> effect. We can make it a little oranger if we don't like that pure red. Um, and it's super easy to just quickly switch out once you've kind of um, gotten everything in place. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. That's, that's. Yeah. So fun. <laughs> yes. So fun. You can play with, around with so many colors and just see what you navigate towards i think i still really love that red me too yeah i think just like a nice kind of yeah classic mm -hmm. lighthouse look yep. um and then yeah you can just go back in if you want to erase certain things and kind of refine it sometimes what i'll do when i'm doing um very detailed glow painting is i'll put something in place like this and then i'll go back and refine the edges to mm -hmm. kind of get that shape of the lighthouse back in so maybe it's more like, yeah, like that. Um, yeah, Daniel said the red slash orange is a nice compliment to the blue sky. Absolutely agree. Totally. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that looks pretty cool. Uh, also, you can do as many different colors as you want with the gradient map. Um, so you can just like duplicate this whole sequence and then change out the color. So if I wanted to use this same method for the water, if I wanted to do really detailed glow down here, maybe some moonlight glow coming down, I could do this three times and mm -hmm. have multi glows coming from different areas. I oh, love it. So then lastly, what we're going to do um, for this edit is I just always go command um, or shift command option E, which does mm -hmm. a stamped layer of everything. 
let me zoom in so I'm not like halfway off the screen here. <laughs> um, and then I'm just gonna convert this to a smart object. So um, for any of you that have seen me stream before, you've seen me do this. It's just kind of like my final, okay, I'm done. I wanna put all the finishing touches on this piece. Um, and so now everything underneath here is obviously not editable, but this is kind of like my one last final step. Mm -hmm. And basically as if I'm doing my filters for Instagram. Got it. So what we're gonna do there is come in and go to camera raw. And um, we have, you know, all of our lovely camera raw features, all of the new masking features that Photoshop has added to camera raw. Um, I think just like sky replacement, this is something that continues to get better and better over time. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, the most powerful uh, feature of Photoshop. So I'm just going to edit this just as I would a normal image, uh, kind of play around a little bit with the colors and um, start to get a cool look. Okay. Um, oh, no. that, that blue, blue. I know, I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> yes. Yep. So fun. And then, I mean, we could totally go back on our green mm -hmm. completely here. Sure. Like, as you were showing yesterday too, this HSL slider is just yes. um, so powerful. It's very, very powerful. And again, you're just going back and forth and see what catches your eyes. Yes, exactly. Let's see, we have some comments. Uh, Steve said, maybe a giant moth that got attracted to the light is flopping yes. around in the lighthouse. Oh my God. That's too real, Steve. That's, That's like, too... real, that really happens. <laughs> and then Daniel said, I do this with, uh, with like every image, but in mash merge, convert to smart object, camera raw filter. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that other people do it too. Yep. I think it's really kind of like a great final step. So mm -hmm. obviously I'd spend more time like masking everything and getting it kind of to a place that I like like when I said earlier something was wrong with the water line I I and even like our sky replacement those are all things that I try to fix before doing any camera roll mm -hmm. um because I don't want to have to go back and touch them up afterwards of course um, so I really like to play with this calibration section down here um this is like really powerful because you can kind of control the overall look of the image. I like mm -hmm. it because it just helps give that final, final color grade. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, the sci-fi Halloween ish. Yes. Is really coming together with these colorings. I know it's so fun. I'm like, Ooh, uh, playing around with the color grading mm -hmm. and tone shadows a little bit. Um, I'm just kind of like totally having fun here and not really <laughs> planning what I'm making, but you the know, the best part, the best part. <laughs> yes. Um, so now we don't have a subject, so we don't need to do that. But now with our new mass, as you saw yesterday in the stream, um, for any of you that missed the stream yesterday, go, sh go back yes. and watch that where you can see Adara yes. go through all of the masking features in Lightroom. That was super useful. Yes. Um, so normally I, you know, we could select our subject, select our sky. Let's see if it's going to get the sky. Okay, cool. So pretty good job. Um, usually what I do when I'm to this stage of camera raw, um, I will just make a radial gradient and mm. then invert it, um, lower the exposure and kind of start to make my own, um, vignette, but I always follow the direction of the light again. Yeah always emphasizing the light that's already in the image that's like a big a big style choice of mine like totally up to you whatever anyone wants to do but that's just how I kind of get the look that I absolutely and then I'll sometimes just get a brush and start to kind of add in any extra lighting effects that I want um oh. And let's see. Okay. Um, then I'll I'll just keep doing this, like keep adding brushes and new layers. Yeah. And um, this is 
kind of like the final step to getting that mm -hmm. cool look. Yeah. I love this part. It's so relaxing. It's so relaxing. And I love, like, sometimes my favorite thing with these dark images, I know this is a topic that has come up before on streams mm -hmm. is how brighter, more happy images are more trendy right now. But I really love dark, yeah. glowing images that have some element of light in the night. Mm -hmm. And what I love as you start to play with these is you get these really nice uh, areas of kind of unexpected light, yeah. like here, here up here on the rocks mm -hmm. and then once i see that even like a little glow touch here um maybe it could be coming from the moon once i see those areas that's what i start to play up mm, yep and this is so this this came together so nicely wow i know i'm kind and of it's so different from the other image <laughs> it really is so now just painting over those areas yeah. that I noticed. And then if we like bump the highlights on that mm -hmm. um, little exposure. Now I don't want to lose too much of that. Not letting me scroll. There we go. <laughs> Daniel said the green, pinks, and blues are creating a visual mood that I can't quite describe, but it's so awesome. Oh. Oh, I love that. Thank you, yes. Daniel. I know it's a little worried that it might be weird, no, but I'm not at really all. digging it. Um, so then we can turn that on and off. We have, mm -hmm. it's mostly seeming to affect up above the water. So maybe we want to subtract that out because I don't want too much up here. Mm -hmm. I just really want it to play around with down below. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Um, okay, let's see. Still got to have some time for comment yes. for review, but, um, wait, did I add a new mask there? Let me see. Brush, mask, talking through the process. Yes. Give us a little ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> yes. New channel oh. idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's looking really cool. Um, and then sometimes I'll go back and just kind of like do a final color touch up if I feel like it needs a little bit more contrast, mm -hmm. more highlights, more shadows. Like in this case, I feel like it looks looks pretty good. Yep. And click OK. Beautiful. Right, oh, so wow. Look at that. That is wow. <laughs> Honestly, camera roll every time. Like people have probably seen me giggle over this so many times. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Look at that's before. That's after. After, yep. It just brought everything again so much more together. <sighs> yep. That is Anna. Well done, Wendell. Well done. Thank you. I was not sure where we were going to go with that. But you know what? I honestly think that I like it more than this one. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, actually, too. a lot. I yeah, love it. I love it. Wow. See what happens when we just follow you, follow your heart and, yes. and let us. Yes. Follow the heart, collaborate yes. with others, get yes. other suggestions. Like, I know, I mean, this one's like now this, I love this one. And now yeah. it's like, it looks okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think with so some tweaking on this and like really digging into it and spending some time on each yep. of the rocks and the glow. I yeah. agree. Yep. Really, really cool. So, awesome. um, okay, let me just save this. And um, now let's say I want to share it. This is um, one of the new features in Photoshop that's really helpful. And um, I think it's a super awesome, awesome feature, whether you're working with a client or a friend, maybe you're collabing on a project. Like, mm -hmm. let's say we were working on this together mm -hmm. and now I want to share it for feedback. And so Right now, um, I have it set so anyone with the link can comment. So I can, and I could also change it to only invited mm -hmm. people. But so I can create the link. Once it's gonna think about it a little bit, do its magic, hopefully it works. Cool. <laughs> so we will copy it and go over to Chrome here and I'm gonna just open a new incognito window um and click paste and so mm -hmm. 
you can see that um, whoever you are sending this to does not need to be logged into the Creative Cloud. Got and it. they can go in and they can be like, love the green. Let's add more. And I'm going to pin it to down here. Mm -hmm. Click submit. Okay, so you, if you're just a guest, you don't want to sign in, continue as guest, okay? Now, um, maybe we circle this, okay? Uh, try another color. Okay, and I forget, forgive me for those of you that have seen this already. I know this mm -hmm. has been demoed a few times through Max, um, but this is just like a really yeah. awesome feature, awesome game changer. Um, okay, so we leave those comments and we can close out of this. And now let's go back to Photoshop and we should, let's see. These comments, this worked last night. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. This should show up, correct? Yeah. I know we are almost out of time here. Yes, we're getting close. Well, let's see. Oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, comments. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so you got, it should, like last night when I clicked over and was experimenting with it, it automatically went to comments and then everything came up. Could be because I'm streaming right now. Mm -hmm. The internet isn't loving me. Um, but it's really cool because this will just come over immediately. Like I was very surprised. I opened it up on desktop and then there were my comments that I was mm -hmm. playing around with and it's circled on your document. So you can go in and fix these things, change it out, share it back out for review. Um, and then we should be able to get our update here on the web. And there we go. Yep. Beautiful. So now everything that I just did in desktop is over here. Um, and I don't know why the comments should be showing up here as well. Um, but now like this is so cool because we can work back and forth between mm -hmm. um, the web and the desktop. Oh, I love that. The more I look at this image, I'm just like, wow. I know I'm really into it. Yeah. I'm so surprised. <laughs> Yeah, I just yep. want to see history. See yeah, let's see. So that's without camera raw. And now yeah, there might be. Oh, yeah. Daniel's saying yeah. a bit of cloud wow, lag. lag. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we okay. go. See? Yep. Cool. OK, so now you can see these comments coming up, I can um, maybe change, I can reply mm -hmm. and say, no, I like this. <laughs> Go away. Leave me alone. I'm an artist. <laughs> um, and, and I can just uh, resolve it right there. So then it gets right. taken care of. And then um, this one down here. Okay. Yeah. I added green. So we're good. So those have been resolved and now we're taken care of, but you can see, you can still see those comments. So yeah. Um, like this is, yeah, as I said, such a great way to work with clients, such a great way to, um, work with people on your team, mm -hmm. collaborate with friends. Like I love this so, so much. Yeah, absolutely. Just again, the ability to collaborate with really anyone, anywhere is just phenomenal. No one has to be looking over your shoulder and giving you, um, some pointers. You can do yeah. everything in real time, which is really great. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, really, really helpful. So, um, yeah, I think we're done with this. I know we have like two minutes left. Two minutes but... left. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, timing was yep. off. <laughs> we, we hit it. We hit it. Anna, you did yeah. an incredible job today. Thank you so much for one, just taking us through your workflow, um, allowing your stuff to just be free and flow to whatever creative juices were going to come your way. Um, if y'all have any questions, please drop them in the chat, whether you are joining us from YouTube or Behance. Um, let me know if you have any questions that we can get to before we start to close. As always, if you are on YouTube, give us a follow on Adobe Live, the YouTube channel. You wanna make sure that you're a part of this community, join us. And then also before we start to close as well, um, make sure you follow Anna, follow her on Behance. Mm -hmm. uh, where, 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 actually, where can people find you? 
Um, so yes, Behance is great. Uh, I need to do some updates on there, but <laughs> um, mostly I'm most active on Instagram, uh, Anna McNaughty on Instagram and uh, my website, Twitter, Facebook, all of the above. You can find Beautiful. me anywhere, really. <laughs> awesome. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much, Sam, for dropping her Instagram and website on the in the chat. Um, we have had some really, really great comments. Um, Daniel says, great image. Oliver says, thank you. It's amazing. So thank you so much, Anna, for today. So y'all want to make sure that you stick around for the Illustrated Creative Challenge with Claudia from Print My Soul. And then following the Creative Challenge, join Isabel as she shows you how to design a coffee table book for a tattoo artist. You want to make sure that you learn how to take your designs and create a quick social media advertising tips in Adobe Express. Awesome. So thank y'all yeah. so much for joining us. Make sure you catch the re the the recap from yesterday and today on YouTube or Behance and have a wonderful week and weekend. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.